Thai people are very obsessive about food and I would say that food is one of the main things that is culturally incredibly important here in Thailand. That, that's it, that's the video basically in a nutshell today. Um, you might think that this video is going to be me walking around a market buying some incredibly fresh ingredients going home cooking them and showing you how to make Thai food it, it, it's not one of those videos I'm going to talk more about how important Thai food is culturally in my opinion to Thai people and how it might differ from the sort of way that you look at food I bet you any money if you've ever given your phone number whatsapp um, line to a Thai girl and you used to get this even when we used to communicate back in the old days by letters right she has asked you this question have you eaten yet and in Thai that translates to Ging Kao Riang and Ging Kao Riang is, is like a national greeting it's almost like a national icebreaker if you get two Thai people meet each other they will ask each other at some point usually right, right at the start of the conversation Ging Kao Riang because it is so important to Thai people. Uh, it, it, it's kind of a, something that they feel comfortable with. So if your lady is asking you, have you eaten yet? Don't think she's being lazy, she's being weird. It's just like we would say, hi, how's the weather? Or something like that. Um, Thai food comes in all different styles. You've got curries, soups, a lot of fried food. Uh, barbecues, salads, salads are really important and there's lots of regional specialities as well. Most people say, and I think if you kind of went to the tourist authority of Thailand, they would say that the national dish of Thailand is Pad Thai. I don't see a lot of Thai people eating Pad Thai. Uh, I see most Thai people every day eating like noodle soup, Gui Diao or something like pagapao which is uh, fried meat with basil i'm using the american pronunciation basil <laughs> pagapao you see thai people eating that more than anything else really um uh, thai people will eat together it is normal for them to eat in twos threes or even bigger uh, groups and it's it's a little bit of a annoying thing here in Thailand if you go to a government building immigration for example and they may have two three hundred people that are employed by that organization at 12 o'clock it is closed because everyone has gone to eat and they all eat together I, I'm not I've never heard a Thai person say this but in my opinion when a Thai person goes to like a restaurant on soy Bacau, a Western restaurant and they see a lot of small single tables with guys sitting on their own and they're eating their 99 baht breakfast or whatever. I think Thais find that a little bit strange and a little bit sad because they see eating as a huge social event and it's not seen as bad to eat while you're working. Um, you will see security guards and everybody else just, just eating as they go. But I think it's fair to say, I don't think I've ever seen a Thai person walking and eating at the same time. In fact, I never saw that until I went to America in the 1980s. Um, but walking and eating isn't good. Sit down, enjoy your meal and enjoy it with friends. Sharing food is really important to Thais as well. Uh, you will see menus at things like KFC, McDonald's, whatever, uh, and you will see dishes on there and you'll think, well, I don't see that, uh, you know, usually in the UK or in America or whatever. And usually it will be something to do with the fact that this meal is good for sharing because it is normal for Thai people to share. I've got a bar on Soy Diamond at Le Pub and we have a staff room and the staff sit in the staff room and eat and I'll never eat alone it'll always be three or four of them together and every time I go in 
the staff say, boss, boss, ginkau, eat, eat food. And I'm thinking, I always used to think, I can see you're eating, why are you telling me you're eating? But until it was kind of pointed out to me, but actually, yes, they are telling you that they're eating, but it's not like, oh, boss, we're eating, you know? It's like, boss, we're eating, come and join us. It's like an invitation to go and join them and ginkau with them. Now, I know, they know, and I know that I'm never really gonna share their food because we have different tastes, but it's just, that's just a cultural thing. Don't be like the guy I remember in another bar that I used to manage, who was never very popular with the girls, and I could never really quite work out why he wasn't very popular. And until the girls told me that every now and then, this was a different bar to the pub and they didn't have food, so he used to order out food, and he used to order his big pizza, this huge pizza used to come, and he used to sit on his own and eat his pizza all by himself, right? And Pizza's very popular in Thailand, and I'm very, I'm kind of convinced that one of the reasons is, is that it slices and it's something that you share with people because they like sharing. And he never shared it with anyone. He just sat there on his own eating his pizza. So the girls really didn't like that at all. So don't be that man. Um, there are four kind of flavors that a Thai person will try and, um, increase in a Thai dish with condiments. And they are salty, sweet, bitter, and uh, heat. And you will see in a Thai restaurant, almost everyone, even a really cheap like street noodle soup place, you will see uh, four pots. There will be uh, fish sauce, the salt, is never actually salt. I've never, don't think I've ever seen actual pots of salt on a table. If, if it is, it's there for Westerners, right? Thais will never sprinkle salt on a dish. They will sprinkle fish sauce. That is their salt. Sweet, obviously, the sugar. And if you are somebody uh, that is diabetic or something like that and can't eat sugar, be careful. Sugar is added to almost all foods here in Thailand. They've got quite a sweet mouth, but um, uh, sorry, a sweet taste or a sweet tongue, but it's not necessarily sweet things. It's usually in savoury things as well. The bitterness is, the, oh, I've forgotten the name of it. It's like a Thai sauce that you will get in a little pot and it's got kind of a vinegary kind of thing in, kind of a mild vinegar, not a strong vinegar. And it will have um, like lemons and stuff in to make something bitter. And then of course the heat, comes from chilies. If you are used to eating uh, spicy food in the UK, for example, where I come from, uh, it will usually be Indian food, and you might eat a vindaloo on a Saturday after the night out with the lads. It's a different type of heat that you get in food here. It's, it's from chilies. You will get a big container on the table with chilies, and you will, st you will look there as, as your lady friend or her friends completely cover their food with uh, the chili or the, the grand chili that, that, they, that they like. And I do think that if you order food in Thailand, Thai food, Thai food, and you specifically ask for it to be uh, spicy, pet, pet is spicy. I'm convinced that the Thai see this is a bit of a challenge. Ah, oh, Falang wants to eat spicy Thai food, eh? Okay, no problem. And uh, they will bring your dish, whatever it is, and trust me, it will be hot. It will be hot. And you might even see the chef poking her head around the corner through the door just to see how you're getting on with an incredibly stomach microwaving <laughs> hot dish. Um, I, I have, like I said, this staff room where the girls eat. And I have gone in there and I have seen girls literally with tears running down their faces. And I'm saying, why, you know, what, what's the matter? Why, why are you crying? You know, I'm the boss, I'm Mr. Caring Sharing Boss. And they're not crying because something bad has happened to them. They're eating the food which they've made so spicy. And I say, well, you know, don't, don't make it so spicy. No, 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 no. 
they they want it they want it that spicy and they cry i don't know why they're crying but they they do and i've literally seen people crying because of it um the great thing about food over here is that if you are really good at preparing food if you're a really good chef you can have a little street cart one of them soy carts that you see when you go around Pattaya. If you are really good at the food that you prepare on there, whether it's uh, chicken and rice or pad pao or som tam or whatever, if you are really good at it, number one, you will be massively elevated in Thai society, right? I think chefs back in the UK, back in America, you know, your average kind of chef isn't really seen as somebody that's a big sort of person. But, uh, <laughs> Um, there was a Thai guy wanting to be on my video. Um, but in, in, in Thailand, if you can cook, and you can cook arai, deliciously, good food, you will you, you be a big star. There are TikTok stars and Instagram stars over here. Uh, and you probably know some, and all they do is they make like a dish, one dish, but they're really good at it. And they are superstars, right, over here. Secondly, I would say, those people, not only are they superstars, just because they've got a street cart, don't think they're not making money. Oh, my goodness, they are making money, right? Some of those street cart people take 30, 40,000 baht a night just because they are really, really good at what they do. And so being good at making food is seen as a massive plus here in Thailand. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Have you got a favorite Thai food dish? Let me know uh, in the comments down below. Don't forget, be very careful. I'll leave you with this thought. Be very careful about criticizing Thai food when you're in a restaurant. If you eat something and it's not very nice, be careful. Saying something is mai arai, uh, not, not delicious is a real, real um, loss of face for the chef and for the, rest, and for the restaurant. So be careful. Criticizing food, maybe do it to your girlfriend. Your lady won't criticize it until she gets out of the restaurant or she'll say it very quietly. She'll go, oh, my God, my God. right? Be careful about criticizing Thai food because they take it very seriously, in fact, I remember um, when Thailand every year used to win the award for the tastiest rice in the whole world. And then one year, I think it was Vietnam, wasn't it? And, and it was like a national disaster. <laughs> it was incredible, the reaction to that. Uh, our food is best. In my opinion, I have to say, Thailand, I love your food. I think French food is the most delicious and Thai comes second. Uh, but anyway, your thoughts and comments, please, down below. Uh, let me know what you think about my opinion on Thai food and its place in Thai culture. Uh, if you want to come and see me, I am Mr. Egg. I'm at Le Pub on Soy Diamond. I'm there every day from about four o'clock. We do have a restaurant. We do a little bit of Thai food. We do three or four dishes, Thai dishes, and we do them well. Uh, but we do have uh, Western food and we've got a great little community in the bar, but we're, we're not clicking. We're always looking for new people to come and I'll sit and talk to anyone, basically. So come on in and say hello. Uh, there is a members area to this channel if you want to keep the channel going, help pay for equipment, software, and stuff that we, uh, that we use for our live streams and the videos that we do. So join from just two pounds a month and you get a vlog from me every week about my life as a bar owner. Real blog, real people, real blog. Um, and we also get uh, an extra live stream in the members area only. Join from just two pounds a month. But for me, Mr. Egg, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, everyone, and Ginkao Riang. <laughs>